So I made a couple of slides based on valuation. I figured it would come up point. And you no, know, right now Palantir, and I like free cash flow as my valuation of choice for looking at companies. I threw Salesforce in there for a specific reason. Salesforce, and I don't have a crystal ball, but they're never becoming a Microsoft, okay? Microsoft has end user products as well as corporate. They're never becoming a Amazon. It's just not what they do, but they are a behemoth of a software company and they're trading at a just over 28x free cash flow right now. Granted, whatever they've done in 2022, everyone hit. So the question I ask myself is, can Palantir at some point get to this level of free cash flow? I don't know. Okay. I, I have no clue. Right now, if Chris was here, I would say 173x for Snowflake is quite rich. Can it improve? Yes. Where they can do, I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. Uh, Mick, can you go to slide seven, please? Thank you. So based on what Alex Carpet previously said, and I took some speculation in years 2026 through 2030, and I kept it at the 2021 free cash flow margin throughout the 2030 mark. There is a path if things fall into place and the revenue declines in 2026 through 2030 to 20 from 25 to 15 percent growth maybe that's realistic maybe it isn't but at the free cash flow margin they were at in 2021 it puts them at 2.5 billion of free cash flow yep maybe they get there maybe they don't could you go to the next slide please so i made three three grids Based on the assumptions I made, and these are my numbers, they probably will not pan out, just my speculation, and how I'm looking at Palantir as an investment. If you give them a 25x free cash flow multiple, which is less than half of what they're trading at right now, if they do get to that 2.5 billion free cash flow in 2030, they would have a valuation of just over 63 billion, which is 270% upside. If you put a 35, X multiple on them at that free cash flow level. You're looking at an $88 billion company. And if you put a 45X multiple, 566% uh, upside. Steven, I mean, would that would that multiple be uh contingent upon the macro during the during 2025? I don't think the macro I'll probably get a lot of heat for this, but I don't think the macro really is going to matter when it comes to free cash flow. I mean, free cash flow is a number that can't be manipulated. Yeah. You know, we're not talking about net income where it depends what you write off and all the different tax implications. This is simply your cash minus your cap X. And that's why I like this number because it is very hard to manipulate. And this is how I like to look at investments. I agree with you. And yeah. look, there's a, uh, there's a path for a lot of upside if things fall into place. And when you look at what they're doing, I would tend to err on the side that it's going to pan out. Now, unless something goes really wrong, I'm going to have to reassess my personal investment and look at how things pan out. But right now, I don't see anything, especially with the growth in commercial. Uh, admit, one more slide. Do me a favor. Go to um, slide number five uh, i'm sorry four because it, it's very important i wish they had put this in the q2 presentation not the letter that alex is these slides are so important because it shows you the growth from the newest customers and if you look at the right hand side the amount of u.s commercial growth that they have done is phenomenal from their new customer base and on the left they're growing their revenue all based on the new contracts. And you start looking at what they did with Exxon. You start looking at, you look at the Skywise venture, they could possibly do that in several other industries. It looks like they're gonna do that with Hyundai Heavy. Looks like that they have the potential to do that with Exxon considering they're probably gonna build off of what they did with BP. They also have a D Morgan. There are so many avenues for them to create custom solutions and have that sell down the value chain to companies they wouldn't even be associated with, but through their partnerships, they should collect theoretically some of the revenue. 
So I see a lot of potential. But once again, as I stated on Seeking Alpha, I'm giving them now after this earnings presentation three more quarters before I really reassess my position because I was not thrilled with Q2. But it looks like it's changing based on the interviews we've seen. Stephen, can you early. can you can you disclose if you're comfortable how much of your portfolio is Palantir? I, I yeah, I would feel very comfortable if I even knew. <laughs> I I honestly don't know. I mean, I can tell you that outside of ten percent. I don't know. Outside of my re, or, or our retirement funds, I mean, we own thirty individual stocks, maybe and. 10 funds, 15 funds. So I, I don't know. I'd have to get back to you. Maybe I'd say you, five to 10%. Maybe. Can, you share, can you share your Seeking Alpha so people can follow you? you uh, seeking Alpha, a name or whatnot? Yeah. It's yeah just, you, can put, you can put one of your articles in the chat if you want, Stephen. I'll also put in the show notes afterwards. So yeah. If you, I mean, I can do it. Yeah. Cool. I'll do that. So I'm we'll interested talk. what you guys think on just the free cash flow evaluation, real quick, if you guys have time to stay on. I think I agree 100%. Uh, I like free cash flow as a metric. I personally look at cash flow from operations personally because it just literally kind of removes out the cost of goods sold. And I think that that's a true representation of how profitable an organization can be. Free cash flow is very dependent on buybacks, dividends, a lot of those things. And so um, when I look at more so companies and their profitability, I look for price to cash flow from operations. But it's a low capex business for Palantir, so I think free cash flow is a good, good way to look at it as well. And I think you you normalize it against other organizations that are in the software industry as well. So I, I don't think it's a bad way to look at it. I just prefer cash flow from operations. But I agree wholly with where you're going with it. I think a lot of people need to recognize that it's a high margin business, and once it actually starts hitting profitability, you're really going to start seeing that number move up. Um, with respect to the cash flow and the positive cash flow at that, because every dollar that they move up, they're going to be probably net 30 to 40% of that for revenue. And I think a lot of people don't recognize how profitable that business is now because it's currently running underwater because of the share base compensation. But once you kind of get out of that in the next couple of quarters, then I think that people will really start to see what kind of cash flow machine this thing will be. exciting stuff steven thank you for sharing these slides i think it was really really valuable stuff especially to see those projections um in the context of valuation chris patel says free cash flow is more is not more important than ever rising interest rate i think he meant to say is more important than ever given the rising interest rate departments uh is now more important right not not now more important okay awesome stuff this was great we we were uh we needed some people today because chris and Sachin couldn't be here so me and matt matt's becoming basically a regular now every week which is awesome uh, so thank you, Logan, Randall, Stephen, and Gabe for hopping on, sharing your wisdom about the markets. And uh, another week goes by, another week of analyzing Palantir, and we'll be back next week. Cool. Awesome, guys. Thank you all for joining, 160 of you. Check out the show notes afterwards. I'll link everybody's stuff, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Have a good Bye, night, guys. Bye. Nice Thanks meeting all of you.